You know, as I've noted before in this committee, uh, SVB, where I'm going to focus my line of questioning, had a peculiar business model that relied heavily on cushy perks for VC clients. It's a business I know well. It was the business I was in before I joined this body. Now, this undoubtedly added their heavy concentration in tech and venture capital, but by now we all know that it exposed not just their own banks, but our entire financial system to a peculiar, peculiar type of risk. It meant the Silicon Valley Bank had a large number of uninsured depositors relative to other commercial banks. It also meant that Silicon Valley Bank it was engaged in a number of very risky business practices that eventually unwound the bank and led to the situation that we have before us. But if the executive's failure to manage risk wasn't enough, we've also seen some suspicious behavior in the lead-up and aftermath from the failure of your former bank, Mr. Becker, and that's why I want to direct my questioning uh, to you. So just as a starting point, Mr. Becker, I, I, I want to focus more on the short term. Elizabeth, uh, Senator Warren was, was focused on the longer term here, but what were the amounts of your cash bonuses in 2021, do you recall? 2021, I believe, was $3 million. And your cash bonus in 2022 was? $1.5 million. So in 2022 in particular, you paid yourself a $1.5 million cash bonus, even as the stock, the value of the company that you were managing declined by two-thirds. That's not bad work if you can get it. As uh, Senator Kramer and I were joking, uh, we would be willing to screw something up for much less than $1.5 million. Um, the stock price fell in 2022. So it's pretty clear the cash bonus was still $1.5 million despite SVB stock falling by two-thirds that same year. Now, do you think it's appropriate to pay yourself $1.5 million when the stock of the company you manage declines by 65 percent? Senator, the two points to your question first Please. is that the um, determination of my compensation is made by the board of directors and their assessment. And the second part relating to this question on stock I held roughly five times the amount of stock that I was required to, and so clearly I was impacted when the stock price so, declined. So, Mr. Becker, you say that the decision was made by the board of directors, so let's focus on them. Do you think that they were wise to award you $1.5 million in cash compensation bonus when the decline of the stock price was 65-plus percent? Senator, I believe they looked at the performance against the goals that were set up, and they know that I was significantly impacted by the decline in the stock price. So, Mr. Becker... It's been reported on February 27th, you sold a significant amount of SVB stock. What was the total market value of the shares that you sold on February 27th, just a couple of weeks before your bank was put into receivership? The 10B51 plan that was entered to in January was for options that were set to expire. They were issued back in 2016, and they were options that would have expired in May of 23. But you sold the stock in February of 23. What was the price of the stock that you sold? Uh, the, the value, I believe, at the total shares was $3.6 million or $3.5 million. Okay, so about $3.5 million literally weeks before your bank was placed into receivership. Do you think that was an appropriate decision to sell millions of dollars of stock a couple of years before, to Senator Warren's point, uh, the FDIC was forced to come in and save your uninsured depositors to the tune of $20 billion? Senator, this, the stock sale, as I outlined in my written testimony, was made under a 10B51 plan that was done just after we released our fourth quarter numbers to protect against information that would be different over time. I signed off on it, and so did our legal team to say that we didn't have material non-public information. So, so, so let's assume that it was illegal. I'm sure that if it wasn't, that information will come to light. Do you think it was ethical? Think about this. American taxpayers, American consumers are going to be paying higher banking fees, fees because of the $20 billion that the FDIC put into Silicon Valley Bank. Do you think that it's ethical to take $3.5 million in stock sales just a couple of weeks before the bank fails? Senator, that plan was legally entered into in January. I understand it was legal. I'm trying to get into something a little bit deeper here. Did you have any idea two weeks before when you sold the stock publicly that something was amiss at your own bank, that you were weeks away from being placed into receivership by the FDIC? No, I did not. So one final question, Mr. Becker. You know, I, I believe maybe it's an old, uh, it's an old honor code, but uh, when a ship's about to go down, the captain should go down with the ship. The first full day that your bank was in receivership was the Monday after. The bank was placed in receivership by Friday. Uh, the first full day was Monday. Where were you on Monday? Were you at the office in Silicon Valley Bank? Senator, I was terminated on Sunday. 
and I had no interaction with any of my team, and I offered to do anything I could to help the FDIC to market the bank to find the best home for our clients and the best home for our employees. My wife and I made a decision. We decided we were gonna go to one of two places to be with family. Either we would be with my family in Indiana or her family in Hawaii. So let me, so let me just follow up. go to Hawaii. Just one final question, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Just on, on that point, you, you were terminated on Sunday after the bank was put into receivership, Mr. Becker. You, you're saying the FDIC was not interested at all in your services or in your help the following week. Senator, I offered several times over that weekend to help prioritize potential acquirers because I felt I was in the best position to help understand who were banks that competed with us. Who were the likely banks that were to acquire us, to find a home for our employees, to find a home for our clients? And they didn't take me up on that advice. And I, I, they were put into a difficult situation, so I, I'm, I'm not faulting them. I don't know why they did that. I'm just telling you the facts around it. I appreciate that, Mr. Becker. I'm mindful of my time here, but that's an interesting fact in and of itself. Mr. Chairman, I yield. Thank you.